Before we proceed further, let's learn what happens when we make a constructor private. And when should we make a constructor private? Along the way, we will also learn about a design pattern called as singleton pattern. So let's go to VS Code. Here I have created a class called person. Now, when we are going to instantiate this person class, we are actually going to call the constructor of this class, right? So here, let's say I have this person variable and to that using this new keyword and by calling the constructor of this person class, this expression here, it is going to return us an object and we are assigning that object to this person variable, this person constant. So here, when we say new class name and after that when we use a set of parentheses, it is going to call this constructor. And we are able to call the constructor here because this constructor is by default public. So if we don't use the access modifier in front of this constructor, by default it will be public like this. And since it is a public constructor, that's why we are able to create an instance of this person class by calling this public constructor. But if I go ahead and if I make it private, just see what happens. You see, here we have an error. And the error says constructor of the class person is private and it can only be accessible within the class declaration. So outside of the class, since this constructor is private, we cannot call that constructor using this syntax. Now, why do we want to make a constructor private? Well, a private constructor restricts the creation of a class's instance directly from outside the class. And this enforces controlled initialization and potentially enforces a singleton pattern. Now, let's talk about singleton pattern. So what we want is, let's say for this person class, there should always be only a single instance. There should not be more than one instance for this person class at a time. So for that, we can implement singleton pattern for this person class. And to implement singleton pattern, first of all, we need to make the constructor of this person class as private. This is the first step. Okay, let me remove this from here. Now the question is, if the constructor is private, how can we even create a single instance? Right, because for creating a single instance also, we need to call the constructor. But since the constructor is private, we cannot call it from outside of this person class. So what we will do is here, we will create a method. Let's call it maybe get instance. Let's make this I as caps. So here we have this method and let's say this method will be responsible for creating the instance of this person class. So here what we will do is we will simply say return new person. So when we are going to call this get instance method, it is going to return us an instance of this person class, right? So now what we can do is from outside the class, first of all, since we cannot create an instance of this person class directly from outside this class, we cannot also call this get instance method by creating the instance because this get instance method is an instance method. It is not a static method. So let's convert it to static so that we can directly call it on the class name itself. Okay. So now what we can do is we can simply say const person equals person dot get instance. So in this way, it will return us an instance of this person class. But we can call it multiple times and we can create multiple instances of this person class using this approach also. But what is our requirement? Our requirement is at a time, there should be only a single instance of this person class. We should not have multiple instances of this person class. But using this approach, if we call this get instance on this person class multiple times, we can create multiple instances. So what we will do is, here we will also create a property, a private property so that it cannot be accessed from outside the class. And this is also going to be a static property. Okay. And let's simply call it as instance. And this instance, it is going to be of type person. Okay. So this instance, its type will be person class. It is going to store an instance, an object of type person. All right. Now what we will do is we will check if person dot underscore instance if 
it contains an instance so if this instance property here if it is storing an instance of this person in that case we are going to return person dot instance okay and since we have used this return keyword this return statement will not get called if we return from here otherwise if this instance does not contain an instance of this person class what we will do is we will set this instance so we will create a new instance and we will assign it to this underscore instance variable okay and from here we will return not this it should be person dot instance and here also it should be person dot instance and here we need to use a set of parentheses and in this way there will always be a single instance of this person class so now if i call this get instance multiple times so let's say this is person one this is person two so both this person one and person two is going to store the same instance because here what will happen is when we are calling this get instance method first it is going to check if this person dot instance is storing an object of this person class here we are initializing it for the first time so this person dot instance it will be null in that case this if statement will not get executed we will come to this line and here we are creating a new instance of this person class we are creating a new object that object will be assigned to this underscore instance variable and we are returning that underscore instance so here this person one it is going to store that instance then when we are calling this get instance for the second time this static property so since it is a static property it is going to store the previous value so right now this instance is storing an object it is storing an object of this person class so when we are calling this get instance for the second time this person dot instance since it is storing an object of person class this expression will return true so we will go inside this if statement and it is going to return the same instance from here so in this person two also we are going to have the same instance which we have inside this person one so both this person one and person two are pointing to same object to same instance of the person class and in this way we have implemented singleton design pattern in a singleton design pattern at any point of time for a class there will be only a single instance available and to implement singleton design pattern first of all what we do is we make the constructor as private we create a property a static property which should store the instance of the class and then we create a method using which we can create a single instance of that class now singleton pattern is something which we do not always implement it is something which is not used very often it is used in some use cases but not always but it's always good to know this singleton design pattern because you might need it in some of the use cases this is all i wanted to cover in this lecture and before we wrap up this lecture i also want to show you that both person 1 and person 2 are pointing to same instance so let's say person 1 equal to equal to person 2 if i save the changes you see it is returning true that means both person 1 and person 2 are storing the same instance of the person class this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day